Hey everybody, welcome back to the fourth video in our type 2 diabetes program. If you haven't watched the other videos, I suggest you go back and take a look. But if you feel like you're up together with all the information thus far, then we are expanding on our last video where we looked at carbohydrates and the different um, nutrients that provide us with energy. And now we're gonna look a bit more at those carbohydrate containing foods to see the difference between what we'd consider good carbohydrates and bad carbohydrates, for lack of better expression, and to see how they impact your blood glucose levels. So one measure that we really need to be familiar with and you may have heard of during your diabetes journey is this thing, the glycemic index or the GI. Now the glycemic index just tells us how quickly carbohydrate containing foods get into your body. The quicker they are absorbed, the more likely they are to cause a high blood sugar. The more slowly they enter the body, the less likely they are to. And a really nice way of demonstrating this is to see it on a graph where on this axis is blood glucose levels and on the bottom axis, this is time. So something that gets into your system very quickly would be considered high glycemic index. So you can see all that glucose is absorbed very quickly and then your glucose levels will gradually drop off as insulin starts to take hold. Now in type two diabetes, in reality, it might take a long time for this to happen, or they might even just stay elevated. Whereas something that is considered low glycemic index has a much more gradual absorption rate. So even if you've eaten the same amount of carbohydrate, actually what you can see is that you've got, although a fair amount of glucose is going into your body, it's not really having an impact on the glucose levels. So this is what we'd consider low GI, and this is what we'd consider high GI, sorry, high. So just coming over to the board here, we can say something that is considered high glycemic index will be something very easily absorbed for your body. So this will be things like pure sugar, like sweets. It will be things like juice and pop drinks. It'll also be anything that tends to be highly processed, particularly starchy carbohydrates that are like white flour, um, white bread, white pasta, white rice. So starch, but white starch. Anything like pastry can be pretty easy for your body to absorb. One that's actually quite um, commonplace, but not really spoke about, is anything that you might manipulate that makes it easier for your body to digest. So something like um, mashed potato, would be easier for your body to absorb because you're breaking down the starch and mushing it up so your body's more easily able to digest it. You think about mashed potato, you almost don't need to chew it straight in and it's absorbed quickly, potentially causing a high glucose level. And another one that does exactly the same thing is cereal. So even though cereals by themselves can be quite low glycemic index, you add milk to them and that can start to mush them up to the point where you don't even need to chew them by the end of the, the meal. Um, and I see this quite a lot in one of our, in our gestational diabetes clinic for ladies that are pregnant who have diabetes because they're measuring their sugar levels an awful lot to make sure that everything's going well. Um, cereals really set them off and it's no different from type two diabetes as well. In fact, where I work in the hospital, um, one of the only options for breakfast is cereal, and we often see glucose levels jumping from single figures into well into the double figures just after breakfast because cereals plus milk is very high glycemic index. Whereas low options tend to be things that are more slowly absorbed. So that's gonna be things like your brown varieties of white um, rice, pasta, bread. Uh, oats tend to be slower releasing anything that you haven't tampered with. So potatoes will be lower GI than mashed potatoes, but actually ironically, or what you wouldn't expect, is sweet potatoes are actually um, more slowly absorbed than normal potatoes and new potatoes as well. Um, and then things like beans, pulses, lentils, so those legume foods, most vegetables tend to be, and some fruits. I should also mention that actually in the high one here, tropical fruits tend to live in here as well. 
So that's the glycemic index. So just transitioning from say white bread or white pasta and moving to the brown varieties, you can improve your diabetes control. If you remember the HbA1c in our earlier video, you can reduce that by about five or six millimole or about half a percentage point just from going high GI to low GI. There are books available on this guy, so you can go and buy this and take a look at it and see which foods um, are considered low, medium and high, and then you can make choices accordingly. But before you do, this does have one major flaw. It does not consider the amount of carbohydrate that you eat. So for example, watermelon is considered very high glycemic index, whereas chocolate, because it has fat in it, the fat slows down the absorption and it's therefore considered more medium to low glycemic index. Now that doesn't make sense, right? Because how can chocolate be better for your glucose levels than watermelon? And this is where the next measure that we can use and take this one step further comes in and it's called the glycemic load, the GL. So this is the big brother to glycemic index that's rarely talked about. So this is the glycemic index, how quickly do the, these foods get into your body, plus the total carbohydrate. Now in my experience, this is probably the most important thing, the total carbohydrate. Particularly when you first start in your journey, before you've gone to address any of those underlying issues that's causing the diabetes in the first place, or if your diabetes is in a particularly bad place at the moment, you're not gonna be able to tolerate a huge amount of carbohydrates. So we need to think about how much of them are we having and trying to choose the better ones for us. As time goes by and you start to maybe lose weight and start to eat healthier and get more active and get fitter, you'll find that you'll be able to start to tolerate more normal levels of carbohydrate and still achieve normal glucose levels, which is the whole purpose of this program. So when we start to do this and we start to consider how much carbohydrate is in it, then it starts to look like more than we would expect. So for example, if we just pop up a little graph up here, returning to our watermelon and chocolate example, watermelon is high GI, no doubt about it, but there's only three grams of carbohydrate per 100 grams, it's 3% carbs. So you just get a tiny little blip. It gets in quick, but it barely registers. Whereas chocolate has a lot of carbohydrate, a lot of sugar. So although it's slow to get in, when it does, up we go. So when we start to factor in both of these measurements, the food groups that would be considered high, medium and low are much more like we'd expect. So the high group tends to be anything like uh, sweets or um, any sort of those candy kind of foods, juices, so pretty similar to the GI, any of those um, white starchy foods, as we mentioned before. But now we start to get things like chocolate in here which was considered lower GI in the other measure. Um, anything that might be um, any pop drinks as well, any, any of those kind of foods that we'd probably anticipate to be not good for us fall into these categories. The medium, and this one's the interesting category because when you go to the brown whole meal, whole grain varieties of things like bread, pasta, rice, Yes, they are lower GI, but they're still high in carbohydrate. So this is where these would fall then. So this would be your brown starchy foods in here. There'll be others, but that's one of the major considerations. Because they're high in carbs, they, we cannot get these down into the low category just for that reason, okay? So then the low categories are much more like we'd expect. So this is things like vegetables, legumes, beans, pulses, lentils, chickpeas, fruits, and uh, milk tends to fall in here as well because it's pretty low carbohydrate. So you can start to see now what type of foods in the carbohydrate land we should probably be focusing our efforts on. More of these, some of these, try and avoid these as much as possible. Doesn't mean you can never eat these, they're there to be enjoyed and often these can be very tasty. But in terms of just straight up managing glucose levels, Actually, it's good practice to try and live in here most of the time. Now, obviously there's other nutrients on the plate, fat, protein, um, we got vegetables here, but there's different types of vegetables and there's one big other consideration that we're gonna talk about in our next video, which is fiber. So fiber is a big thing, it's kind of interlinked with this, but I just wanted to explain in a bit more detail what fiber is and its relevance to our diabetes and our health. So there you go, glycemic load is the one to look at. Um, not as commonly wrote about, but definitely worth some further research. But in a nutshell, this is how um, it works. 
So anyway, if I hope you find that useful and I'll see you in the next video to the talk about fiber. Hi guys, hope you found that video useful, talking about lots of different things here, general principles. Again, we're just touching upon some of these. So if you feel comfortable with that and you can run with it or do your own further research, we wish you all the best. But if you want someone to just explain it to you in the context of your own personal circumstances, we'd encourage you to go check out our consultancy services where we can work with you and coach you through how to get on top of your glucose levels once and for all. We'll also give you access to our premium content, which is recipes and exercise plans um, and videos that you can follow at home and give you just that few more tools in the toolbox about getting on top of those glucose levels and managing your diabetes and improving your overall health. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you later.